there's a possibility that you'll have more interviews in a space of six months than you would have job offers. This vlog wasn't supposed to be me sitting in my room. I actually had plans to do this elsewhere, but unfortunately due to other circumstances, I'm stuck in my bedroom. And this video is 12 tips on getting an interview and preparing for an interview. For the whole remainder of this video, keep in mind not all interviews will go well. Some will go terribly bad, but others will go either good or they'll go all right. But experiences differ for different people and your experience actually when it comes to interviews is a very, very valuable experience. Starting off tip number one is to go look for jobs. This is obviously a thing that you need to do if you want to get a job interview is you have to look for jobs. This will mean by using websites such as Jobs.ie, Monster Jobs, or just general job websites. Also recruitment agents are quite good as well, but if you're low on experience, sometimes applying directly to the company yourself might be a bit more beneficial for you because companies with journey may actually consider you where recruitment agents might not because they don't feel that you have enough experience for that role. Tip number two, read the job spec. What is the company about? What kind of person are they looking for? What are the requirements of the job and what they expect you to know such as skill set and experience and all that sort of stuff. Tip number three, when you're looking at the job spec for a company, make sure you check out the company, who they are on social media, and their website. Make sure it's a company that you see yourself working for rather than just applying for the, the job to the sake of applying for the job. Tip number four. Tip number four, if you feel ready to apply for the job, hit the apply button and make sure you have a good cover letter and you have a good CV. When applying for a job, don't really focus too much on job experience when they put down they're looking for someone with three to four maybe five years experience because really at the end of the day if you don't have experience if the no one's willing to give you that experience then how do you get that experience so apply anyway you never know you could still get that interview also just bear in mind that when applying for some companies they don't always get back to you this is usually a sign that your cv hasn't been successful in the narrowing down process that they do and not to take it as failure just means that you're just not successful but don't worry about that either because sometimes companies do take two three weeks even six months before they get back to people who apply for jobs personally myself i've been contacted by companies that i've applied for over a year ago asking if i'm still interested in work and if i want to get an interview and in some cases it's usually a yes but it's not always that case it does happen though so keep that in mind tip number five Always keep a record of the jobs and the companies you apply to. This will come in very, very handy when you get a random phone call at nine o'clock in the morning or a random email from someone months later because they're interested in you. Tip number six. If you have been successful with getting an interview, congratulations. Now, you remember that research you've done on that company prior to applying for the job? That's gonna come into play again because now you're gonna to have to research the company again to refresh your memory. Remember that job spec you saved as well? Well, guess what? That's gonna come in handy as well because now you can repair certain questions and answers that may come up in the interview. See, thinking ahead. And tip number seven. You don't always have to say yes. You can say no to interviews, especially if you feel after applying for the job that you may not be the best suited person for it, or you might have changed your mind on the company and may not actually see yourself wanting to work for them. So you don't always have to say yes to interviews, but it's advisable that you do because the more interviews you do, the better you do become at doing interviews. Trust me, it's actually true. Tip number eight, prepare for the interview. So preparing for the interview would generally go back to the job spec, look at your job spec, look at the keywords in the job spec itself and try to come up with questions and answers to, the, to these keywords. Also a good thing to do if you don't fully understand something in the job spec is to Google it and try to understand it as much as you can if you haven't done anything in that line before. Also if there's something you've done in the past and you have on your CV but you don't know is in great detail is to go on to Google again and research it and try to understand a little bit more detail of it. And that way then when you're asked a question about it, you're able to answer it, maybe not to the standard that they want, but maybe in a way that to show that you do actually understand it. 
Now a good way of preparing for an interview is to do a mock interview. Some recruitment agencies will before interviews if you're successful with going through them will arrange a mock interview with you prior to going and this will help you again prepare for the interview awkward questions and possibly give you tips on how to answer certain questions as well. This is very very beneficial and does help you quite a lot because I've done it myself. And another thing about preparing for interviews, some jobs do require you to have a portfolio. So if the job does require you to have a portfolio, and especially design jobs, will look for a portfolio of work that you've done to have a portfolio somewhere, whether it's printed, whether it's on a blog site or on a website. A lot of companies do refer to you to have a physical copy of your portfolio. So that is a preferred method. But if you have it on a blog site, have it on a website, have a physical copy and let them know that you have it online as well because that way it actually helps you as well that they can look at your work after the interview. And it maybe if you feel like you botched the interview or something, that they can go, well, he has potential or she has potential and they might consider you for a second round interview if there is a second round interview. Tip number nine. The night before the interview, don't not worry about the interview. Get a good night's sleep because if you don't sleep well the night before an interview, you can probably botch the interview and that comes across as well in your interview that you haven't got enough sleep or rest. Tip number 10. Going back to tip number I said in tip number nine, sell yourself. The interview is about you and about you and what you have done. So sell yourself as much as possible. You are your main selling point. Tip number 11, give yourself time and be early. This gives you a chance to park your car, get your bus, get to your venue. Make sure if you do get lost, you have enough time to find your way around. And also this shows that you are very good at timekeeping and time management, that you're able to be there on time. Also, when it comes to an interview, if you're there 10 to 15 minutes early, this also proves that you are serious about the job and that you want this job. And on this one as well, if you are running late and you believe that you're going to place, there is no shame in contacting the person or company that you're interviewing you to tell them that you are running late and that you will be there as soon as possible. It was just out of your control. Tip number 12. Don't panic, don't sweat it. The worst case scenario when it comes to an interview is afterwards you do not get the job. And this happens a lot. So the more rejection you get, the easier it is to manage. Trust me in this one, I've been rejected for so many jobs in the past and probably in the future, I will get rejected from jobs. Of course, some jobs when you get rejected from them will hurt you deeply emotionally because you may have wanted that job, you felt that you're perfect for that role. But again, don't worry about it. If it's not for you, it's not for you. And all you can do when it comes to interviews is do your best and sell yourself the best as you can. Okay, everyone, so that is my video for this week. I hope you liked this video. I hope you find these tips appropriate for you or somewhat useful. I've done these tips out on my own personal experience when it comes to interviews. And as always, if you like this video please give me a good like if you have not subscribed you can click over here to subscribe and i'll see you on wednesday peace it's tip number eight. Oh, that's seven tip number eight that's nine tip number eight. tip number eight